that you are grounded, relaxed, have enlightened and invigorated energy inside, that you don't hold back, that you trust it, and that you let it do what it wants to do. And if you're off just a little bit on any one of those things, it will bite you hard. <laughs> That's just like life. Universal laws, the nature of existence, want us to work with them, and so we transform to be able to be in harmony with them. And that's what we do in our transformation coaching and in our Kung Fu school. And I didn't always know that transformation was shedding what you're not to reveal who you really are. And I didn't know that I wasn't nothing. I was smart, but I suffered from depression, anxiety, intense shame, and self-loathing. But when I was 20, it was 1997, I moved to Colorado Springs and I wanted to get into martial arts. I wanted to do something active, and by that point, um, like two or three of my mom's friends had been murdered. One was drowned by her soon-to-be ex-husband, and another was found dismembered in a dumpster. I wanted to know that I could protect myself. Uh, so I found Kung Fu, didn't know anything about any of the different martial arts, and I landed in this by chance, and I loved it. And I let Kung Fu help me survive my depression. There were times where if I could just get myself to get out of bed and get in the car and drive to class, even if that meant that I was doing our warm-ups with tears streaming down my face, and I did that multiple times, that I knew I was going to feel better after. Um, when I was a third and fourth degree black belt, I found myself in an abusive marriage. Manipulation, emotional and psychological, uh, physical and sexual assault, and I didn't use my Kung Fu skills to defend myself because I wasn't aware and I much less had the, the um, understanding of the deep psychological layers of intimate partner abuse. I have that understanding now. Um, I, I, I won't get into the reasons now, but I found myself feeling like I was the special one who could, who was the only one who could help him. And um, that was because I was strong, and I was the only one who knew his over 150 unique personalities. You can hear more about that bizarre part of my story at Memoirs, right here on Um, so eventually our instructor left and I took over the school. And we were struggling, the school was struggling, I wasn't making enough in my freelance graphic design, my husband wasn't making enough and we were still dealing with all of that. And, um, but I'd been learning about universal laws and personal development. And I thought, maybe if I could do something or be something different, maybe I could get a different result. Then immediately everything inside of me said, None. You can't do that. Yeah, you're a martial artist. Yeah, you're now the school owner and you're a great instructor. But don't forget what you are. You're nothing. You're worthless. You have no value. And I thought, yeah, I know. But we're desperate. It's do or die. Maybe if I could just ignore that voice and ignore fear, doubt, and worry for just even two weeks, Maybe I could see if there could be a change. Two weeks turned into 30 days. And in 30 days, I tripled my income. I found a new bigger space for my school, which we're now still in. I broke my trauma bond with my husband. I left my abusive marriage. And that 30 days changed the entire trajectory of the rest of my life. Um, transformation, the inner transformation that I just even tried to do that showed me for the first time in my life that I matter and that I have actual power in my life. And then I spent a few years healing and then I was ready to step forward out of survival mode for myself and bring my business out of survival mode and put my coaching and my Kung Fu school under one empowerment umbrella called Seven Star Phoenix. And I learned that it's not about a perfect life, it's about a perfect love for yourself. 
and it's about being more bold, more confident, more kick-ass, and it's your life. Show up and kick ass. By the way, she's a Kung Fu master. <laughs> um, I forgot to announce you with all the pretty stuff that you gave me. I'm so sorry, but it just fit the way it went. So it worked out perfectly. So now we open to 20 minutes of questions and answer. Who's got the first one? Flip, my love. When did you decide you were worth attending? <laughs> When, um, when I found out I mattered and had power in my life, um, it was because I dared to step out of this mess of I'm worthless. I mean, yeah, I was good at Kung Fu. I could do that. I could teach and still have this secret life behind depression. But the things that I had to do inside to dare to come forward in a new way and just pretend that none of that was there, um, it, it just changed me. And I followed a coaching process that helped me through that, and I instinctively added some, a few other things in, um, a daily fulfillment ritual that included meditation and getting centered, and just, I did not allow a single shred of fear, doubt, or worry to come in, and day one, I made half my previ previous month's income, and my goal was to double it in 14 days. Um, day two, I made the other half. By day 10, I ma met my goal, and because these results were coming in, I was like, what the heck is going on? I, this, it was totally foreign, and it woke me up, and it just naturally told me I mattered, and I had power. And then I looked at my marriage, and I was like, huh, I don't need to sacrifice everything about me for him anymore. That's a great story. I think people try to move people forward, and they're thinking about that. But I don't want it to be simplistic, okay? Because humanity is simplistic. It feels like there are 30 days and everything flipped. Tell me about the challenges of, of the flip and the continual challenges that you go through to ward off all of those uh, voices and things that keep you from moving forward. So it was, it was easier than I ever thought it would be because I got out of resistance and I had a big enough reason why to do it. That was a huge key. Um, I did attach myself to teachings of universal laws and I flooded myself with them. I kept them on top of me. I kept certain laws that I thought, could I dare believe that, you know, cause and effect and the law of polarity that tells me if I have a need that that need could be fulfilled. Do I dare even trust that? And I, I had to. And I hung on to that. I immersed myself in that thinking and I did not allow myself to stray for a minute. And, you know, it was a miracle that I could do that, but I did it. Um, and it wasn't simple, but I just made myself. But the fact that I started to see results on day one blew my mind. And so it gave me, I started with faith not knowing, then that piece started to give me evidence that what I was doing was working, and it kept me going. The, cha the continual challenge is that you're not always in that zone, and you slip back. Or things, or things start to work out, and you kind of let go because hey, things are going fine now, and pretty soon they've slipped too far, and they're like, dang it, i got to bring it back up again. So, you know, that is a continual challenge to go up and down that way. Um, did I answer your question? Yeah, that was helpful. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yes? I want to, in general, just learn more about this 30-day period. Like, what, what steps, what action steps, what, what happened? What was the okay. transition? Like, more specific. Yes. Okay. So, um, I was looking for cash. I was looking for money, because that was the actual problem that I needed to solve in the moment. So um, I followed a process that was pretty simple. It was probably, it's gonna sound overly simple, and it was basically believe, trust like the laws that I kind of mentioned already, um, and make a list of possibilities and see you know, where money could come from and ideas. And it's like I had done that before, but I'd never done it with this type of mindset and the desperation that made me willing to to not let anything stop me. Um, instinctively, I added the meditation that wasn't part of what I was like following, um, and that made a huge difference. I spent like 20 to, anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour and a half every day. I got up at seven, went out to the pool at the apartments where I lived here in town, and I just swam back and forth. I felt one with the universe. I felt like I could just go on this journey, um, and then kept following the steps. More steps were like, you know, see what stands out on your list and follow it. I mean, it's like simple stuff,
but it's like you have to have something inside your mindset, like open up things that weren't opening up, even if I did those steps before. Um, and then I learned how to look for opportunities better, I learned how to follow, like, fight through challenges better, and again, I just immersed myself in it. And I said, I'm only going to do it for two weeks, because I can't imagine doing any of this for longer than that. And then it worked. Um, was that a specific? Yeah. Did that help? Okay. Yeah. Um, you said you check with your income. Um, yeah. Did you do something with your marketing plan that the previous owner just didn't do, or was slacking that, per se? Um, let me think. So, um, I didn't really reach Here's what happened. Uh, I was a little less than a year having taken over. I acquired the school, like, people maybe had just paid a year, and I didn't see any of that money, so they didn't, weren't going to pay for another year, stuff like that. So maybe, had I not been in that situation, maybe it would be doing a little better from the get-go. Um, in that 30 days, the things that came up were um, doing a special that I had never, that he never really did, that encouraged them to pay now at a discount, and that kind of, um, that's not like a long-term plan that you can do every month, but it kind of like, got the fires going. Um, I honestly don't remember if new students came in from in that time, because really it was more about moving the school space to a bigger space. We were in a tiny, like, our space was like the size of the stage. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and um, I found the space that was over triple the size with only like a tiny jump in rent. I mean, I was lucky, but it was because I opened up. So it was more things like that, and so then we had a more presentable space. Um, and, I, you know, even to this day, I haven't done a lot of marketing. Uh, I still get word of mouth through the website. It is my number one thing, and I'd like to do it other ways, like speaking. Um, but it was more just like freaking magic that was unique to me that came out and worked. The universe said, I'm going to help you, and it's, you know, you probably couldn't duplicate it exactly for another person. Do you have a vision, like say you did use, did focus more on marketing, marketing, do you think the business could grow a little bit more? Yeah, my vision for the, so I have the Kung Fu School, my vision for that is to double and expand into our adjoining space and create a meditation room and more room for like our wooden man apparatuses. Um, and I, for the coaching, I um, would like to serve more in a bigger way, do more like speaking and speak on the coaching principles and also, you know, where appropriate, share my story. I'm working on my memoir for like a physical book for 150 husbands and I have a, um, things percolating with that. So um, uh, right now it's about spreading empowerment and if that's through martial arts or if it's through coaching or if it's through my domestic violence survivor story, uh, that's where, where I want to go. Yeah. I'll follow up if you don't mind. First of all, what the heck is 150 customers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come to memoirs. <laughs> oh, I'm coming to memoirs. Okay. I mean, I can, I can tell you the short answer, but go ahead. And the follow up question is who, who walks beside you? Who do you have walking along with you? What are your allies in the journey that are helping you? inside his world inside. I don't know if it's real or fake. I just know that it was my experience to like record them and manage and figure out what was going on. Some were enemies to me and to him and some were friendly. It was, yeah, come to know It's It's ri ridiculous. And then for the other question, um, I did do a lot of it by myself, but I tapped into other coaches and I made friends through that and started a community of like of people with, with the same type of coaching language and Maybe it expands further than that, but we at least have a similar language. Um, and uh, my, my students have always been supportive. I, just, I have an assistant now, a part-time assistant, who's been amazingly helpful. So, I mean, it's just kind of been growing. And after I healed, did the bulk of my feeling of healing, I really started to see these connections come up more, and it really bolsters me. Yes? Kung Fu. What? Tell us about Kung Fu. Okay, so Kung Fu comes from China, 
And um, we are traditional. At some point in the history, because of the oppression of China, um, Kung Fu had to be more hidden and became more of a performance, like gymnastics type of art, and it's amazing to watch when the monks come around and do these crazy things, it's cool. Our lineage came through and retained the traditional aspect of it. So in the Kung Fu world, you have Wushu, the performance art, and traditional Shaolin Kung Fu. And um, it incorporates all the external things that you would expect, fitness, we have a lot of interesting conditioning and self-defense. And then it incorporates all of the internal arts that came through Kung Fu, like Tai Chi is a martial art under the Kung Fu banner, um, and other internal arts and meditations. And um, in our school in particular, we we don't focus on the sporting side, even though that's great too. We focus um, just on our own path, and um, we use a belt system to help have, give you benchmarks. And there's, um, like I said, external arts you see in one of the weapons um, and internal styles. So uh, and it really has the perfect blend of internal infusing into the external in a, in a unique and unexpected way. How does that parallel with building your business? Because you just said something very intriguing, and a lot of us know that you have to do the internal work, like one of my mantras is work harder on yourself than you do your business, and your business will grow. So how does that, because that sounds like that's parallel with Kung Fu, so kind of walk us through that. It's exactly that. Um, your subconscious has been programmed until you were seven, probably all of you know that by now, uh, by the time you're seven, and it, it's running the show. You have to become aware of it, and you have to know how the universal laws work and learn how to reprogram it to come forward in a way that's more intentional instead of the whims of life and circumstances. And that is all internal. So we, we undervalue, we overvalue in general the yang, the goals, the tactics, and we undervalue the inner work which drives the entire thing. It's like a person on a horse. The horse is the yang side, what's gonna happen, the jump, and the riders, the person, the yin side, driving it with the subtleties that have to be aligned in harmony. And it's exactly kung fu, and it's exactly coaching, and it's exactly life. And business. And business, exactly. So I'm curious, um, tell us who your ideal client is for each arm. Is that the same? Is it different? Do you see um, I have some crossover, but in general, the people who are just really passionate about Kung Fu because of the Kung Fu movies they grew up with, or, you know, <laughs> a lot of them, um, they come because they just never did it, and they become like a middle-aged person, and they're like, you know what, why did I never do it? I'm going to do it now. And because we're like teens and adults, they fit right into the environment uh, because it's made for that. Um, so on the Kung Fu side, um, and... It's, it's a lot of personal development, but they want to move, they want to do something that's a little more exciting to them than the gym, and they want to do something that has that yin-yang balance. Um, on the coaching side, I do have clients who are not business owners, but the majority are business owners because they're the ones who really understand this transformation and understand how much it directly affects everything in their life and their business. So, that's basically, yeah. <laughs> Well, the phoenix you would expect, the transformation. The seven stars are yin and yang, and the five Chinese elements. And together, they represent perfect harmony within you and within all existence around you. So, what's the plan for the next three to five years? Three to five years. So, I would like to do the doubling of my student base, as I mentioned. Um, I would like to have a bigger presence in the world for... Um, transformation and for my um, uh, domestic violence uh, survivor story. And I haven't thought much bigger than that because all of that is working together. Um, I would like my book out, I would like to have my story on screen, and I have talked to a Hollywood producer to gauge marketability, and so, um, so I'm pursuing those avenues uh, slowly but surely. Um, and really, I just want to serve people with empowerment and these three platforms. They just work together perfectly, even though they're all slightly different. Yes? What does it take to become a Kung Fu master? <laughs> it takes a lot of perseverance, and you can't have an ego. An ego could be, I'm so great, I'm going to whatever, whatever. Or it could be, I'm so embarrassed that I look stupid and I'm not willing. Those are both two sides of, an, of the ego. And we don't practice that. We practice 
coming out of our comfort zone. And we just don't give up, you just keep working. And there's a set curriculum for every level and it's hard and every time we test, we test on everything we ever did from white belt up to the current level um, over a series of pre-tests. You can't do all that in one day. The last time I tested, it was like 100 pieces of material. I think this coming one um, before that it was a little less, but, um, and it's, it's a lot. But you don't give up and you have me to help you through and you can become a Kung master after so many years of dedication. So you're about to test for something else? I'm, getting, I'm working towards my seventh degree black belt. We have a China trip coming up in 2023. I've never been. I've missed it every time. And this time I'm going and I'm going to test in China to seventh degree black belt. Speaking engagements. I would love to have more speaking engagements oh, yeah, nice. on any of these topics. 